It happens when, for example, the police cannot find a missing person, or when the doctors cannot cure a certain person, or when no one around can help. What do humans turn to? They turn naturally to Allah Azza wa Jal. They turn to Allah. And this is very significant. The people of Palestine have been suffering for 80 years, give or take. Since we were born, many of us, we've always been aware that something has been happening in Palestine. Correct? We grew up hearing and seeing the destruction of homes and the uh, and the yani, the imprisonment of children and women and what have you, and the wailing of women. And yani, who amongst us does not remember a time when uh, somebody was speaking about the atrocities happening in Gaza. So of course this has been something that's been happening for decades. And it's been continuous. So then the question then becomes, and the topic of the khutbah is, when will it end? Right? And we will attempt to, inshallah, provide evidence that the end is near bi-ibnillah. The end of this conflict is near. And so we start to look, and we make actually um, a broad conclusion, or a, a, a theory, if you will, that victory and relief, victory and relief, comes at the very end, not the beginning, because, uh, at, at the end of the test. So victory and relief to the Muslims in any situation comes at the very end, after the peak of the test. And so how, how do we get to this conclusion? So let's look into the evidence, shall we? Uh, and so what we're saying, before I get into the examples, is that it doesn't come in the middle because it didn't get difficult yet. And it doesn't come at the beginning because there's no trial that happened. It comes at the very end, when there is no other way out. There's no other way out except towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All, do all doors, they look closed. And you start to lose hope in the people around you that they cannot help you. So where do you turn to? You turn to Allah. They let you down, whether it's people, whether it's institutions, whether it's governments or countries, and they're not helping. They let you down, they abandon you, or they're simply not able to assist you. Okay, that's when the victory comes at the very end. In Palestine, it's arguably, Allah Ala, maybe the worst it's ever been since the beginning of this you know, uh, issue. It does not appear that Others are helping. So, like we say, assistance comes at the very end after difficulty has reached its peak. And so let's get into our evidence. Number one, Ibrahim السلام, his wife, Hajar. Ibrahim leaves her and her infant baby son. And when does the relief come to Hajar? Does it come in the beginning? When Ibrahim leaves and walks away? No. Does it come in the beginning? Does it come when uh, in the middle, when her food and water supply are slowly dwindling and halfway empty? No. It does not come at the mid midway point. Does it come when the food supply is completely finished? No. It comes when even her, not only her own milk su supply is finished, but there is when the food in the belly of the baby is finished. That's when Allah Zawajal sends the aid and she has to go uh, running panicking between the two hills looking for help and then you know uh, at the very end angel Zibreel السلام, brings out the water of Zamzam right and that's how the story goes and the tribe of Jorha comes shortly thereafter and <coughs> comes to them so we see in this example, that the aid of Allah Azza it came at the very end, not at the beginning, not in the middle. Another example we can look to in the Quran is the story of Lut and his people. Lut, I saw. The angels came, as you can see, they came specifically in the form of the handsome young men as a final test and a final argument against them, against the people of Lut. And so the narrations mention that as they entered the city, they met one of the daughters of Lut, who was outside running some kind of errand. So we know uh, that 
she was out there, so it should have been arguably around Maghrib time or before Maghrib. Since she was out there alone. So anyhow, she leads them, <coughs> the angels, to her parents, to Lut السلام, to her dad. And what does the, what does he do? Lut for the rest of the night. He's negotiating. He's barricading doors. He's barricading the windows. He's arguing with them. He's, he's negotiating with the angels, right? And they came, handsome young men, staying with in his house. So he knows, and the word got around that they're all his Lut's people are gonna come and they're gonna try to get in. So all night he's in a state of panic. Then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Hud? Qalu ya Lut, inna rasul rabbik la yasilu ilayk. He says, I mean the angels say to Lut, we are uh, messengers, yeah? I mean, we are rasul rabbik. We are messengers of your Lord, therefore they will never reach you. Did Lut, did Lut say, why didn't you tell me earlier? Oh, you should have told me earlier. He didn't say that, right? Because Lut, he knows that the ease and the relief comes at the very end, right? Uh, and then he says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the end of the ayah, he says, Inna mawridahum as-subah, alaysa as-subahu biqareeb. Their appointment, their destruction is in the morning, the Fajr time. And the Fajr time is close. So when did they tell him this? That we are messengers of your Lord. When did the angels reveal that they're angels in human form? And answering young men to Lut. When did they do that? At Subh time. So from Maghrib all the way to the very, very end point, they revealed what was the actual case, right? And so it tells you, you know, the whole night he was panicking and he was, uh, you know, getting ready and barricading the doors and all of that. And at the end, the angels told him, and by the way, they'll never make it in, and they won't touch you, and you're safe. And on top of that, we're angels. That's what they said at the very end. So this is the way Allah Azza wa this is the way He operates. Like, with those examples, أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم في أفوز المستغفرين